Before I get started on doing the Flying Phoenix Heavenly Healing Standing Meditation Yang Long Form, I just want to throw out this little disclaimer. I don't have the luxury of a director, a first AD, or a cameraman, so I'm not, this is going to be sort of semi-professional, meaning that I'm not going to mark the floor. There's always going to be some interruption because I'm in the basement, the oil burner will kick on. Uh, I have no way of knowing if the battery is dying and all those kinds of uh, challenges. So just kind of bear with me. You might find little blips or uh, interruptions and things don't quite sync up. It's because I'm not really trying to make it per perfectly professional. So bear with me. Okay? All right. The Flying Phoenix. Uh, I'm, not, I'm also not going to do this like I do with the short form or the long form where I take one gesture and go into all these details. This form is fairly simple. So I'm just going to roll through it top to bottom. Like I said, I'll have to break now and then because of the burn and stuff. But I'm just going to show you one gesture at a time. And you can, uh, you know, figure it out at your own pace. All right? So starting from the very first place, you want to get a nice wide uh, horse stance. I wouldn't consider this a horse stance. This is kind of close to a pony stance. You always want to have a, a wide stance. Clydesdale size, uh, you know, something that's uh, substantial. All right? Now, you're always going to try to keep your knees bent, just like other uh, forms. Most important rule in Tai Chi Chuan is to always keep your knees over your toes. We're going to be moving back and forth, and sometimes we'll be right dead set in the middle. But the bottom line is whenever we shift from one side and turn our upper bodies to an opposite side, there's a tendency for one of the legs to want to buckle. Our job is to try to keep this back, even though we're turning our body in the other corner. Our Zen point is always going to be straight ahead unless otherwise noted when we go 90 degrees to either of the sides. All right, so we start off with Monk Bakes for Rice. Uh, at some point in time, we'll be coming up, but again, at that point in time, I'll remind us, don't come up to the point where you lock your knees. This entire form is done in a bent knee posture, sometimes at a median height, sometimes a little higher, and sometimes a little lower. All right, so we start with Monk Bakes for Rice. First gesture is basically to shift and turn the left thumb towards you, make the right hand parallel with the right leg. Okay? So from here, and not every gesture has a name to it, but for the ones that I did learn, I will give you those names. Some of the transitions in between, you just uh, float through them. All right, so first gesture is shift to the left, bring the left thumb straight back to your left shoulder, the right hand is palm down over the right leg. Next movement is this left hand is going to shift right across parallel to your collarbone, and you stop when it's even with your right shoulder, okay? So basically, we've done two gestures already. My recommendation, uh, if you want to memorize this somewhat quickly, is you just knock out like, you know, five, six, seven, ten of these guys here, and then you can play with the second gesture. When you make the second gesture, make sure that your knees aren't buckled and your uh, center line stays in the corner when you make this shift. So you can kind of knock out ten of those guys, and then if you feel like it, you put the two of those together, sort of work through the transition, and basically work through the entire form that way. All right, so that being said, so we start with monk bags for rice, we shift, and then we uh, shift to the right, and I call this like passing through. The next gesture will be to turn the palms upward, and the middle finger of your left hand will touch the elbow of the right when you're right in front of you. And again, the Zen point always stays in the front. So I'm going to make a connection to my elbow right here. So I kind of call this like docking the shuttle, if you will, for lack of a better thing. If you notice, when you dock the shuttle, it's a very slow process before they interconnect the uh, gates. Then we're going to go all the way 45 degrees to the other corner. Your hand will also be at a 45 degree angle to the ground. It's not down like this and it's not perpendicular. It's at this angle. All right, so taking it from the second movement, we just shift. Turn the palms up, touch the elbow with the middle finger of the left hand, and your 45 degree angle in that corner. Make sure the back leg is straight. When we're doing these opening things, uh, the form takes about five minutes to do. So when I make this shift and turn, don't be in bent knee all, all of these times when we're shifting from one side to the other. It weights about 60-40. So you want to do that in order for you to rest this leg temporarily, because when we get to the deeper parts, your attachments are going to start to feel it. So you want to sort of straighten out one leg while you bend the other. All right, same thing over here. This is my bent. This is my straight over here. All right, going on to the next gesture. It's called withering tree. I'm going to shift to the right leg, straighten the left leg, 
turn the thumb and it's going to be like facing my cheek. If I was to look 45 degrees to the corner, it would split my nose in the half. All right? That's another thing to be mindful of, by the way. When I turn to the corner, you're going to be tempted to look in the direction that you're turning your center line off to the corner. That's not really uh, going to the corner. I sometimes see this. I say, okay, shift and turn to the corner, and people will turn their heads and look to the corner. We're trying to turn this and not turn the head. So just be mindful of that. Again, from the first monk bakes for rice to the first gesture, I'm looking here, but my center line is, and you kind of have to force this one, make this line up with your right foot. Then this comes through, and I'm still in the corner, but my Zen is in front. Then we touch the elbow and come to this corner, and now we're onto the withering tree. Turn the thumb so it's towards you, and now the hand is perpendicular to the ground, but this would touch your left cheekbone. Do not look in the corner, but get your center line in the corner. It should, it should be over here, and actually, in the opening move, it's a little harder to realize that corner, but because we're touching this hand, it's easier visual to see that my hand is pointing in the same direction as my left foot in this case, all right? So that, that's a good way to uh, sort of check in that you're hitting this corner. And we go to the withering tree, same thing. When you sit back, don't lose that corner. Now the next movement, uh, be mindful of this right knee because you're gonna turn strong to your left. So this upper withering tree hand is gonna go all the way around. So this is a bit of a stretch. This is gonna go all the way around directly to your left hand side. As you turn this hand, you're gonna drop the left hand down. The Zen point will remain in front. If you see me looking over here, it's just to draw my attention that my hand is directly to my left. Don't come up short. Try to push it a little bit. So from the withering tree, we turn strong. The left hand drops down. Then the hands change places. You're gonna bring the left hand up to shoulder level, and you're gonna bend the arm slightly. Right, it's not locked, slightly bent sort of have the circular sensation as if you're holding a beach ball against your pecs. So from the withering tree, from the withering tree, we stay here, we don't buckle, turn strong, the hands switch, bend the left arm slightly. The right hand is gonna find its way in front of the dantian, which is three fingers below the belly button, and palms down towards the floor, guarding the dantian. So from the withering tree, we'll turn strong to the left, switch the hands, get the ball, now shift to the left leg all the way over, and here, checking in, my right hand is parallel to the floor, below the belly button at the dantian. My left hand is a ward off left, so it's near shoulder level, maybe a little bit lower. If I drew a straight line between the palm of my hand and my shoulder and the camera, that's what I would get. That's where I'm going to stop. Don't go too far, so you wanna stop when the shoulder, the hand, and your Zen point are in a straight line. So this is ward off left. Going to the next movement, we shift our weight to 50-50, draw the left hand back, turn the right palm up. We're simply going to float this down, and once it touches, what you want to do, what your target is, is to get the beefy part of your thumb on the upper hand to fit into the little valley of the palm, so that if you put your hands together and kind of squeeze like this, it feels very, very solid. It's a very solid feeling. So the left hand <clears throat> will float down. This hand is, again, it was here, now it's still uh, below the belly button. Don't turn it over and raise it. When you flip it, just turn it over. So let me, uh, let me take it from there. Let me take it from the withering tree just to put those together. So we're gonna turn, switch the hands, guard the dantian, Ward off left. Here, my left hand is in front of me. I'm gonna draw it back as I turn the right hand up. But when I turn the hand up, I don't raise the hand, I just flip it over. Now, catch the beefy part of your thumb, float it down slowly, <clears throat> make it fit into the uh, valley of the palm. Stay connected. Feel your hand slide or spiral, spiral underneath. Now, dip and let the hands slip apart we're going to come up with the arms rounded towards the neck level. Hands will come towards the neck, the palms will go down, then we'll reset and go back out, keeping this circle, all right? Don't lock the elbows and have just the wrists. When we do this move here, <clears throat> you come up to the throat, 
Turn the palms down, reset, go out, but don't lock. Sink. We're sinking again. Keep the hands side by side. Now we're going to roll up into a prayer hand. So fingers back to back, rolling up. And once you're here, just about at your uh, mouth or nose level, you're going to roll the hands through to a prayer hand and then break apart to what's called monk gazes at moon. Now notice that my hands are <clears throat> curved as if I had the moon in my hands and I'm surrounding it or holding a basketball or something like that. So my hands are not flat forward, they're not side by side, they're slightly curved. And again from a martial perspective, if I was trying to control somebody's upper body, where bodies are curved. So that's why I keep my hands curved, that's the intention there. So let's take it back from the uh, <clears throat> dip. So we just, we did the slip and dip <clears throat> and come up to the throat Turn it down, reset, and sink. Now we're going to roll the fingers up. So roll the fingers up and rise up. Now this is going to be higher than the monk begs for rice. It's going to be higher but not locked. Higher, pass through. So feel this uh, nice transition, this kind of like passing through the prayer hand. Passing through the prayer hand. Now you have your monk gazes at the moon. Hands are pretty much at eye level. Now we're going to go back to monk begs for rice. So sink down to monk level, begs for rice level. Rise up but don't lock. Monk gazes at moon two times. Sink down two times monk begs for rice. And on the third gazes at moon, we break this process. The left hand will cover, touching. We're going to sink down, hands float down to below the belly button at the Dantian level. Flip them over. Now we're going to go deep again. Sink. Break the hands, let them slide apart. This time we're going to go up to the heart level, gather the energy towards the heart. Palms down, sink. We're going to do three waterfall breaths. So the hands are away from you. All right? The hands are away from you. You roll them in and sink. So imagine that your wrists are attached to a log floating in water, and you bend the elbows to roll the log. <clears throat> so when we do the waterfall breath, after we do our, our slip and heart level, hands down, this time we sink. So the hands raise up before. Don't use the shoulders either. In Tai Chi Chuan, Principle 5 always talks about shoulders down, elbows down. So use your forearms to lift the hands, relax them, roll back, and sink. So we do three of these. So that's one waterfall breath. Roll the log towards you and sink two. Again, rise up, but don't. Lock the knees, three. Now comes a tough uh, stretch. We're gonna turn 45 degrees to the corner, to the right corner in this case. When you do this, this knee is gonna wanna buckle. Try to isolate the upper from the lower. As you make this turn, you're gonna turn the left hand over, palm forward in front of your thigh. The right hand is gonna come up in front of the forehead. My center line, can't see it because I don't really have a white uh, frogs here, but my center line is in the corner. Now this is the part that looks like an illusion. I'm going to bend my right knee, but I'm going to keep my weight 50-50 in both. It looks like I'm shifting forward to this knee and looking up, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to stay here. I'm going to bend the knee and allow it to pull my center forward somewhat, but I'm going to keep my weight even over both feet. I'm going to look straight up, so the monk gazes of the moon was here. The moon has gone up to the zenith. So we turn to the corner, right? Turn to the corner. We look up, but the weight's still even in both feet. Do not shift and look up. Basically collapse. Collapse, and you're still over both feet. Then we come back to the front, cross the wrists so that the left hand is on the inside and touch at the wrist. Not the hands, not the fingertips, not the forearms. Wrist to wrist. We're setting up the next move. This next move is to set up a press. To do the press, I'm going to take my left hand and the roundness of my knife edge, and I'm going to roll the hand downward as I turn to the side and set up my press. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come closer to the camera and just uh, see what that looks like from a close-up perspective. And again, when I go back there, it's not marked, so I'm not expecting to land the exact same spot. All right, so my hands are crossed like this. Uh, when you're doing the form, you'll be doing to the right. And I know it's backwards in the camera, but 
uh, watch the video of me doing the entire form knowing that it goes uh, off into the right hand side. All right, so from here, I'm going to turn. Now, my left hand is to roll down. Hands are connected at the wrist. As you turn, you're going to turn and, and set the press hand at the same time. So I'm going to call this prep. So you're going to roll your left hand down so that when you're 90 degrees to your side, your hand's going to be in this configuration. Now, it's hard to see it from the side, but my hands look like this. When you roll this hand down, and you set up your press, your hands, you're not going to do this, but it's almost like you can grab both of your forearms, all right? The alignment of the left hand is if you'll notice that the lower uh, place where the digits connect to the palm itself is in line with the upper part of my forearm, okay? So when you do this roll down, if you have to slip a little bit or whatever, roll down, right, our hands are crossed, which means that my right elbow is going to come up. My right elbow is going to come up because we're setting up a ward off hand with a pressing hand, all right? This is called G. So we're doing a pressing motion. So the hands are crossed. You roll this hand down, lift the right elbow, and now your hand's in a proper position. My left thumb <clears throat> is just resting in the back of my forearm here. No big deal. My fingers, the lower part, is aligned with the forearm. If, if I flip these over, it would match and fit over the top of my forearm nicely. So one last time, my hands are crossed and touching. I'm going to roll the left hand down and simultaneously lift my elbow to set up and prep for my press. And I will do this in concert with turning at the exact same time and timing it so that when I'm over here 90 degrees, not to the corner, 90 degrees to my right hand side, I have a good press hand. All right, so that's what's going on with the hands. <clears throat> so <clears throat> from the cross hand uh, posture, we're going to turn 90 degrees to the right and your Zen point will also end up looking over there. So we're going to turn, roll the left hand down, raise the right arm, set up a, a press hand. So you've got a ward off hand, which would be shoulder level, and we're off here. Don't let the knee buckle. Turn, isolate the upper from the lower. Now we will shift. Go ahead and straighten out the back knee. When you shift, the right knee is gonna to wanna to bow out. Keep it over the toes. Remember, knees are hinges. Don't make the knee do what your uh, hip is meant to do, your core, your center is meant to do. So when you make this turn, knee over the toes, and when you make this shift, bend the knee over the toes, but hit this side directly, 90 degrees. Now we're going to break the hands apart. Now when you break the hands apart, your uh, target is to have the hands slide over, break apart, and they're dead even with each other. In other words, if there was a plate glass here, the fingertips of my middle finger would be touching. My hands are directly side by side. Again, this is for flexibility and stretch. My left arm, in order for me to get my hand side by side, I have to turn my core further to get this even over here. That's critical in terms of the flexibility I'm looking for. So after we do the press, break apart, the hands are dead even, shoulder width apart. Now we're gonna have the left hand pull the right hand in like it's in the draft of the left hand. So left hand guides the right. When you're in front of your uh, Dantian, the hands go back to back from the middle finger right up to the wrists. Okay, everything's touching all the way from the uh, tip of the finger to the uh, wrists. We're gonna roll this hand up into a prayer hand. Right about here, okay? So the next thing that we're gonna do from here is uh, similar, we're going to set up another press. We're going to turn and twist our hands at the same time and set up the press. Now I'm going to bring this close in again because the technique is going to be slightly different, meaning this, that when my hands are in this position here, <clears throat> as I turn, my hands are going to twist. So my right hand will twist away from me, my left hand will twist towards me. When I do that, my palms, the heels of my palms are still touching. So this doesn't get me to the press, all right? Before when we had cross hands, 
because I was at my wrist and I turn, I get to the press just by rolling over the roundness of my knife edge. This guy here, you have to twist, and so my palms are still touching, or the heels of my palms are still touching. So as you're turning, your left hand, you're gonna sort of cheat by sliding it down and then get to this position that you had before, where the joints here line up at the top of the forearm, I'm 90 degrees to my right, and everything's good to go, all right? So in a similar way as before, in terms of I have to twist, and I'm gonna raise my right elbow so that I have a ward off hand. So you're gonna twist and lift, slip, set up the press, and then you're good to go, okay? All right. So I want to take this from the cross hands to that new part because there's a, uh, one uh, preparatory transition. So from the cross hands, again, we roll down, don't buckle the knees, 90 degrees to the right. Shift, break the hands apart, make sure that they're shoulder width and even as if they're touching an invisible wall. The left hand will guide the right. Here, they go back to back from the tip of the finger to the wrist, roll up into a prayer hand. Okay, roll up into a prayer hand. Now you're gonna shift your weight to your left leg, straighten out the right, gonna twist. Don't let this knee buckle, it's gonna to wanna to buckle. Gotta twist and slide down. So now I have my press hand. My Zen point will be over here. I'm gonna shift my weight. Again, keep the knee over the toes, straighten out the back leg so you can rest it. Here's a press. Break the hands apart, shoulder width like we did before so the hands are even side by side. We're gonna roll back. Keep your knees, don't let them buckle. Roll back, set up a second press. So this one, you just bring the hands and just go for the press. There's no twist this, twist that, or anything. You just come back, set up another ward off right hand with a supporting press hand. Make your press, break the hands apart, keep them even side by side. Then we do a thing called cat's paw. You're gonna pull the fingers in. The thumb comes in, the fingers come in, and you draw hands even side by side, shoulder width, right back towards you as you sit into the back leg. Then we open them again and go towards the other leg. And like before with the monk gazes at moon, the hands are slightly curved. So if I was facing you and I did my press, I would do a cat's paw. And then when I do my on, my push, my hands are slightly curved. So same thing, when I'm over here, I break apart, I do a second press, I break apart, I pull the fingers in, and then I open and slightly curve my hands. All right, so let's take it from the uh, prayer hand. So this part here is simply shift to the left, straighten out the right leg to re rest it, turn and set up your press. So twist the hands, turn at the same time, slide it down, cheat a little bit, don't buckle the knee, bend the right knee over the toes and shift. Here's your press, break apart, hands are shoulder width apart and the hands are even on the imaginary uh, wall, pull back, just set up a ward off hand with a press, another press, break apart, pull in, cat's paw, thumbs and fingers, keep the hands side by side, and turn the hands slightly curved, like monk gazes at bone. All right, going on to the next part. The left hand, once again, will guide the right. When your hands are down here in front of you, you're gonna turn the palms up and your middle finger, like before, is going to seek out the right elbow and touch, just like we did earlier before the withering tree. So as the hands come down, right here when they're in front, they start to rotate. Middle finger finds the elbow, and you're now 90 degrees over here. The right hand is going to be per uh, 45 degrees to the floor, not out like this, and not perpendicular because the next thing we're gonna do from here is going perpendicular. So we're gonna roll back, hand is now set to perpendicular, and my Zen point's over here. I'm gonna follow my hand with my eyes, but once my hand is passing in front of me, I'm gonna gaze past my hand, my Zen point will be out front, and my hand will go 45 degrees to the corner. We're gonna shift the hands, all right, so Zen point's there, let the hand pass through. Let the hand bring your eyes here and then let it pass through and gaze off into the distance. The left hand will now slide up and you want to stay in contact 
with your hand in, in these transitions. So the left hand will slide up the forearm, the right hand will slide down, then the fingertips will sort of follow along the forearm and you're establishing 90 degrees, touching the elbow again. Come over to this side, we are going to slide up and slide down at the same time. Middle fingers, the fingers touching the forearm, get your 90 degrees. So we do five of these. So this is the uh, second one. Turn to this corner. Again, Zen points in the front, weight's 50-50. Slide up and slide down. Maintain connection with your uh, arm. Turn, so that was three. This is the fourth corner. Slide up, slide down. Hands perpendicular. You're gonna feel stretching here. Turn, this is the fifth and final one of that process. Moving on to the next part, we're gonna just simply relax the left hand, draw the right hand across, and I call this wrist over wrist. I'm looking beyond my upper hand. This hand is relaxed down low, near the Dantian. From here, like we did earlier, do not let the knees buckle. You're gonna turn strong and bring this right hand all the way around till it's off to your left hand side. Again, you're looking for some flexibility. Uh, if you come up short, fine, but after a while, it keeps striving for this corner because then you uh, will get more flexibility out of this. So from the wrist over wrist, just like we did earlier in the form, you turn really, really strong. Now, the hands are gonna switch places like we did earlier, but instead of coming up with a ward off hand, we're now gonna do another wrist over the wrist, right here, okay? So the lower hand, again, matches what we did a second ago. Both the hands are very, very relaxed. All right, the next thing that's coming up is uh, probably the more challenging part of this form. The right hand is going to float up and you're gonna lift the left elbow so that the hands touch and make a connection. We will slip the hands apart. The middle finger is gonna stay touching. Middle finger stays connected. We're going to sink down. We're setting up a thing for called wind over the clouds. We're gonna sink down and try to keep the back as straight as you can. Bend over a little bit if you need to, but don't do this, all right? If you want to keep your back, again, principle one is always keeping the back straight. Sink down as far as you can, turn the hands over, come back up, again, monk height, not uh, moon height. Heart level, turn them back over, sink down. Now shift to the left leg, straighten the right, reach out as far as you can. This is window over the clouds, the right hand is parallel to the right leg, palm is down. The left hand, the palm is pointing towards the crease of my elbow, and I look up, the moon has moved from overhead to over my shoulder behind me. So I'm gonna look up over there, and, and again, straighten leg, bend this one. Float over to the other side and do the same thing over here. The moon has moved rapidly to the other side. It's up and over your shoulder. The right palm is facing the crease of your elbow. The left hand is even with your left foot. Here's the hard part. Turn the both palms up. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna pull this leg in as slow as you can, raise up, plant the foot down, so now your feet are parallel in a wuji stance into a shoulder bump. And we are uh, wrist over wrist. The right hand floats up, touches, connects, slip, stays connected. Middle finger stays connected, sink, keep the back as straight as much as you can, gather, come up to the heart level, sink, shift left, straighten out the right knee, look up, the moon is up and over shoulder behind you, hand is parallel, palm down, shift to the other side, same thing, wind over the clouds, looking up, palms up, pull as slow as you can, lift the leg with the hands, plant the foot, so that your weight is 50-50, this is called shoulder bump, and your Zen point is out in front, okay? Your Zen point was looking at the moon before, looking at the moon when you pulled in and came up, all right? Basically, your Zen point is kind of off to the corner, but you will gaze it back to the front. You don't really look in the corner. As you pull this in, you're going to start to realign your Zen point because you know that's where you want to be at the end of that sequence. Okay? All right. So my weight's 50-50. I'm in a shoulder bump. Let's go on to the next part. So I'm going to shift to my right leg, and I'm going to kind of corkscrew down, rooting in this foot. As I do this, I'm going to pivot my left foot 
and turn it 90 degrees. So right now I'm in a Wuji stance in the corner. I'm going to pivot my left foot to the opposite corner. All right. Basically, I'm establishing what would be called a T stance. If I was to drag this foot back, I would form the letter T between my feet. So footwork-wise, it's a case of you just shift and pivot this foot and point it to the opposite corner. Hands, I will, as I sit and twist, pulling my heel, not pushing my toes, pivot on the ball of the foot, sit down a little bit, reach forward as if you uh, just put a shovel into the dirt and now you're going to pull it out. All right, reach out with your hands, palms up. You're going to pull the foot in, drawing your hands to your dantian. All right, and again, I'm kind of off in that direction, so I'm sort of looking that way. Pull in, I'm going to lift, and I'm going to reset my Zen point straight ahead, but I'm going to now put 100% of my weight into this left leg. No weight in the right leg, but I still have my Wuji stance. So after I do my sit and twist, I'm going to pull in, up, and I'm going to go right back to that Wuji stance, shoulder bump, except I'm not going to stop at 50-50. I'm going to shift over to 50-50. I mean over to 100 zero. So we pull, lift, plant, shift. Now at this point, I'm going to change my Zen point to the corner because the next movements will be uh, in that corner. So I've got my shoulder uh, bump over here, no weight in the right foot. I'm going to turn strong, drop the right hand down so it's parallel to the floor. Make a vertical fist with the left hand and now I'm going to turn my attention to the corner. I'm going to punch straight in the direction of where my left foot is pointing, and I'm going to punch straight over my wrist, so I'm going to draw my right hand back a little bit, and I've got my vertical punch over here. Zen points over here, still no weight in the right foot. We're going to remain 100% in this left leg. So just one last time, from the uh, pulling in and shoulder bump, Weight's 50-50, but I don't stay here. I'm going to go 100-0. Change your Zen point. Drop the hand down parallel to the floor. Make a vertical fist off your hip. Punch in the direction where your left foot is pointing. Vertical punch. Draw the right hand back. Now, we're going to open the left hand. All the way still in the left leg. Open the left hand. Turn the right palm up. We're going to turn. So it's kind of like you're pushing something aside. In fact, when I do this uh, move here, when I make this move here, I time it so that when my fist reaches the end, my fingers roll out. Okay, it's like they here and then they roll out. I'm going to turn strong to the right. My left hand is going to go all the way around. I'm going to drop the right hand down. Then I'm going to drop the left hand down. And I'm going to do a ward off right hand like we did earlier, but we did a ward off left. In other words, my right hand is going to bend slightly like I'm holding a beach ball against my right pecs this time. My left hand will be parallel to the floor. It's going to guard the down tien as I shift my weight to my right leg. And like before, my checkpoint is this. If I was to draw a line between my shoulder and my hand and my Zen point in the corner of the direction of my foot, there would be a straight line between shoulder, hand, and Zen point. The left hand is going to be in front of the down tien, which is below the belly button a little bit, parallel to the floor. Okay, so starting from the uh, starting from the 100-0 shoulder bump, Zen points over here. I'm going to turn and look to the right corner, block down with the right hand, make a vertical punching fist, punch straight in the direction where your left foot is pointing, but again, no weight in this foot. And as your hand reaches the end of its uh, path, roll out the fingers, stay in the left leg, turn, sweep across the left hand, drop the right hand down. When you're pretty strong over on this side, almost directly to my right, I, I like to stretch as much as I can. Drop the left hand down, raise the right hand, bend the elbow slightly. Shift to the right leg now, bring this ball around, and again stop when your shoulder and the right hand, ward off hand, and your Zen point all line up. Then we finish with another withering treat. Go back to 50-50, turn the left palm up, middle finger touches the elbow again, and this time, the withering tree does split my nose. When we were on the other side, it was on the cheek side. Here, it's facing you. Okay, this next section, it's going to be a little tricky facing the camera. 
I don't know how else to solve this. Uh, if I turn around, maybe it will help, but I'm going to do it in the direction of the form first, see how that works out. You're going to turn strong to your left, all right? So basically, as a clue, especially when you do the dark side, where my upper hand is pointing is a hint as to which way to turn. When we switch and do the other side, you're going to get lost, but it's okay. You'll figure it out. So from here, we turn to the left. Now, the left hand is going to drop down. We're going to turn really strong all the way off to my left side. Then I'm going to raise the right elbow to raise the left hand. And now both my hands are shoulder level. Like the ward off thing, my left hand is now bent slightly, right? It's bent slightly. I'm holding this imaginary ball. This hand is palm out. We're going to shift our weight to the right leg as my hands sort of come across. I call this like drawing the curtains, like I'm going to push the curtains aside. So I'm going to push the curtains aside, but when my hand, my left hand is directly to my left, 90 degrees, that's when I'm going to change the direction of my body, meaning I'm going to now, like we did before, I'm going to corkscrew in the right leg, I'm going to pivot on the left foot to the opposite corner, turn my palm over, drop this right hand down, so now I have my T stance, I'm going to extend this right hand down Tian level, and try to line up my upper hand, my lower hand, and my left foot. So everything is here. And almost equal distance between this hand, the Dantian hand, and the floor. All right, so from the withering tree, from the withering tree, turn really strong to your left. And when your left hand is directly off to your side, which would be that corner, I'm in this corner with my Zen, that corner, when my hand gets to that corner, that's when I'm going to start to lift and bring things back. When, my, when I'm back to my 50-50 Wu Ji at this juncture, this is when I'm going to pivot on the left foot and slip this hand underneath at Dan Tian level. Okay? So, I, I'm not sure I uh, covered this thing. After we did our uh, ward off right hand scenario, the withering tree is a 50-50 stance. I hope I said that. If not, um, you can fix it here. All right, let me do this one more time. This one's really tricky. So you turn strong to the left, and when your left hand, right hand is off to the left corner, your Zen point's over here, off to the left corner, this is when you start to uh, move your arms. So lift the right elbow, lift the left hand. All right, hand's not straight, slightly bent. I'm gonna draw the court curtain, so my hands are kind of turned out. So I'm gonna draw the curtain, and once I'm back over here, I'm starting to shift to my right leg. I'm going to turn the left palm down. I'm going to reach behind me and come out, sink down. Now I have my T stance. I pivot on the ball of this foot, and I have my T stance. This hand is even with your Dantian down here. It's not this, and it's not this. Follow the Dantian. All right, so moving on from this, my Zen point's over there. I'm going to pull these things in. And I'm going to leave the heel of my left foot up in the air. All I'm going to do here is I'm just going to switch my hands. So I'm going to switch my hands and put the foot down. So this is at shoulder level and this is here at Dantian level. I'm going to sit down again and lift the heel. All right. So this is pretty simple. So we were out here in a T stance. We were reaching out for this imaginary ball, everything equal distance. You just pull these things in. Keep the heel off the floor. Put the heel down as you switch. Upper hand is shoulder level, lower hand is down ten level. Go back out, switch the hands, and now you're holding the ball on the other side. Now we're almost done. I'm going to reset my Zen point to the front as I step out to the side. I'm back to my horse stance, feet in the corners. And like we did earlier, this left hand is going to float down, going to hit that fleshy part of the thumb into the valley of the palm, slip underneath, stay connected. We're going to dip one more time. Now we do another waterfall breath here. We did these before, so I'm not going to detail any of this. Now, here's the next tricky part. Do not hit the ceiling with your head. We're closing the form. You're going to bring your hands out and around, slide this foot in so your heels are touching and the palms are away from you. Don't rise up. We're going to stay in this bent position. I'm kind of stretching the Achilles tendons and the lower calf part now with this last move. The hands slide down. They roll in back to back 
like we did earlier, from the middle finger tip to the wrist. We're going to roll up into a prayer hand. Thank God this is almost over. And now we're going to rise up as the hands break apart from the heel of the hand, right to the fingertips, and slide around the side. Okay? So I'm not going to do a lot with that because it's all fairly simple. I'm pretty sure you can just rewind the tape. So the only thing that I want to cover now is, is that it's important to do both sides of a form. Those of you who are students of mine know that I do all my forms in two directions. Does it make sense to me to do a form in one direction? Because then I'm only working some, uh, one side of my body predominantly. And like the short form, we do the white crane on the right leg. We do play guitar on the right leg. We do hype at the horse on the right leg. We never do white crane on the left, white crane, or play guitar, or high pat the horse on the left leg. The only way you can do that is you have to do the form in the other direction. This form is no different. Now, the thing is, is I'm not going to go into the details, because once you get this part memorized, all you need to do is figure out how do I transition from this to the dark side. So when we uh, get near the end, remember we had our ball, we stepped out, we floated down, slipped the hand underneath, we did our thing. Now, after we do the waterfall breath, we close the form. You're not going to close the form. When you do your waterfall breath, now you're going to do the entire form, shifting everything the opposite side. So this time, instead of turning to the right and bringing my left hand up, we're going to turn to the left and bring the right hand up. Then we're going to fall across like this. Then we're going to come across over here. So the only thing that you're going to notice is, is that what used to be left hand on top, it'll be the right hand on top, and vice versa. Everything just changes. Everything just becomes the opposite. Okay? So it's not rocket science. You'll figure it out. Uh, lastly, I will, uh, you, you can see me do the entire form uh, in the common direction. I'm going to do one in the uncommon direction. So if you're trying to learn it in the common direction, run the uncommon direction if you want to have me like mirror the image, all right? And then if you want to do the dark side, or the uncommon side, run the normal thing because it'll be a mirror image. You guys will figure it out, all right? And uh, hopefully you'll enjoy this. I enjoy this form from many standpoints. Basically, you don't have to move your feet. Uh, you can learn it faster, you can relax sooner. It's wonderful if you find a nice waterfall, put the waterfall behind you. Just take all that energy in off the waterfall. A nice panoramic view is another thing that I like to do when I'm riding my gold wing. All right, hope you guys enjoy this fun as much as I do, and uh, have yourself a nice Taiji journey. <laughs>